Jeff's right. tiny little preseason notebook. All right, let's do this. Cowboys content. What player was eating a hot dog on the sidelines? Home of the Cowboys. Uh, Joe Looney, yeah. but he's not on the team anymore. Not anymore. First thing in the notebook is a uh, kudos to our guy Osa Odigizuwa. There you go. Cowboys third round pick. And, I mean, if you just want to get real friendly, I'll give kudos to Jalen Smith for the play before I give credit to Osa. Oh, the fourth down play? Yeah, they had like a third down and five. I reached out to you, and I apologize. You were nice about it. You didn't go after me on Twitter. It was a... That's what I did. I thought it was a PBU, but it was a... Just a tackle. Just tackle. Tackle for... Jalen made a tackle that made it fourth and one. Yeah. And then on that fourth down play, you had... um, There's another guy we need to talk about. That This is only for Cowboy nerds. Uh, But Osa, Leighton Vander Esch, and Justin Hamilton were the guys that jammed up that fourth and one and made it not work. So they all did a really good job. And it's great because Osa is going to have to play a lot until Neville Gallimore gets back. He's a starter right now. He's my starting my three. Justin Hamilton, he kind of keeps making plays, and I feel like nobody talks about him or cares about him. Like he's just that guy it's at the end of the that, roster that might it like isn't on the team. Well, literally, he's at the end of the roster. He wears number ninety nine. He does wear ninety nine. Yeah, is he making the football team? Like with all the injuries, he pops in there with the first team defense. Well, if you start thinking about those defensive tackles, who are your who are your Brent Urban? Yeah, Osa. Okay, it's although good. Urban, when you're healthy, I think might play more end. But yeah, Urban. Osa. I think those are your starters, by the way. And behind them has been Bohana. Bohana Hamilton. It's kind of slim pickings. Am I forgetting somebody? Because Gallimore's out. Tristan yeah. Hill hadn't played really. Watkins, Carlos Watkins. Watkins yeah. COVID deal, so he didn't play yesterday, but he'll be a guy that actually plays. So maybe Hamilton is one spot out. But yeah. like the dude just kind of keeps making some plays. Biggest positive from the game. The Houston Texans did not convert a single third down in the entire football game. Oof. Unless they did in the fourth quarter at some point when I stopped counting. No, it's 0 for 10, Good I believe. Count. Okay. 0 for 10, yeah. So never. Yeah. And uh, I really enjoyed the theme of what I feel like we're seeing on third downs, even though I guess technically Mike Nolan wasn't calling it in that game because <laughs> he wasn't allowed to be there. Or not, I'm sorry, Dan Quinn. Dan, to say, yeah. I'd like to apologize, Dan. I'd maybe like maybe apologize. Dan isn't the answer. Maybe it's Joe Witt. Well, I feel like on third downs... He went after him, didn't he? I feel like that's what they're doing all the time. Yeah, And all the preseason games, yeah. they're not sending three guys and playing coverage. Yeah. They're sending five guys. And not the burgers, like five humans, to go get after the quarterback and make them make a quick decision. And it's working out really well for them. My problem is is that we do it every year. There's something that you see in preseason and in camp, and you're like, all right. And I'm watching this team in preseason, and I'm going, wow. That's without Tank. That's without Carlos Watkins, which whatever. But they're playing good defense. I I hear you, and I, I would be with you on that if it was another coaching staff, but I think Dan Quinn has real authority. I think he takes the initiative. And there's lots of reasons to believe he's been empowered and is enacting things. Yeah. So. And it is, like, this game is the Houston Texans, who they are in the, I don't know, uh, I guess the Spencer Rattler Bowl. They're trying to get the number one overall pick, yeah. and they'll probably pull it off. But still, 0 for 10 on third down, and playing super aggressively. And our guy, Maurice Kennedy, I'm watching the entire first half, and I'm like, ah, they're just not going to let Kennedy win a starting job against Jordan Lewis. They mm-hmm. know who their corners are. Second half starts, and the first pass attempt is a, to the slot receiver, Maurice Kennedy. Bat down. Yeah, it's all he does. What does he have to do to actually get on the field? I don't know because all he does is bat down balls. I was kind of hopeful that he would have. That would have been you know. Well, you've seen Jabril Cox play like three good games. I was kind of hoping that it was going to be three really good games for Kennedy. I was hoping this one was going to be one of those ones where he was going to knock down like two, three passes, have about four tackles. I'm I'm looking for a reason to replace Jordan Lewis. I really am. I I, I think Jordan Lewis might be a liability. Anthony Brown might be too. That's what I'm saying. I mean, take your pick. That's the problem I have. The, the, the biggest problem is that Wright and Joseph don't look ready to play. 
I agree with that. Like, I think there's a portion of and the I Cowboys wish fan of, base that wish thinks they are. They're not. And they're Joseph, not. I think, watching him over the course of that game, um, that four tackles, but he's not. He's not bad. No. But he's he also does give up plays. He does. But he is like when he does. He's there. Like he can yeah. play man coverage and he's already sure. like at least in the vicinity and competing when the ball is coming. But I don't like I just don't think that he has gone and taken a job he from hasn't. Anthony Brown. He has. And if he does, great. But I don't think he I don't think he has. I don't know. Maybe bite the bullet and go for it. You know, put him out there and yeah. see, see what happens. Sink or swim. Exactly. See what happens. Yep.